follow that. I actually do want to touch on some issues of financial irregularities that the uh, previous speaker touched on as well, but in a slightly different way, because I want to use this adjournment debate to make a number of points regarding the apparent illegal activity and financial irregularities in the internal operations of the British National Party. Um, the BMP claimed to be a mature political party, the fourth national political party, some are within them argue. Yet the allegations that have come to light over the last few days directly contradict such claims and need to be thoroughly investigated. For that reason, I wrote last week to the police to request an investigation into claims of illegal spying that are currently at work within the BNP. And today, I've received a 20-page dossier entitled Financial Irregularities in the British National Party, an investigation by Searchlight Information Services, which I, in turn, am sending on to the police and the Electoral Commission following my speech here today. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, today the far-right British National Party is engulfed in a political crisis that threatens to tear the party apart. On the 9th of December, the party leadership sacked two of its senior officers amidst claims of gross misconduct after they were found to be behind a blog that criticised fellow BNP officials. As a consequence, over 58 BNP organisers and regional officials have resigned their positions and eight councillors have withdrawn the party whip and become independent nationalist councillors in a show of support for their two sat colleagues. While I, like everyone in this House, welcome these divisions, I would like to highlight some practically unsavoury, particularly unsavoury aspects to this feud that is unbefitting to any legitimate political party. And I believe much of the behaviour of the BNP leadership is actually illegal. I'm particularly concerned over the following allegations. First, that the BNP have posted on their website a recording and transcript of a private conversation between the two people who were subsequently sacked. It is the belief of the people concerned that their house, phone and computer have been bugged. In two meetings over the last week, in the North West last Wednesday and in Leicester on Saturday, BNP leader Nick Griffin is believed to have admitted to some device being used and insisted that he would not hesitate to use such devices and methods in the future. The BNP has boasted that this information was gleaned by its intelligence department. Now, this House might well be interested to note that this intelligence department consists of former police officers from the apartheid South Africa, and some of these men have been linked to apartheid regime's intelligence services. Second, on Saturday the 8th of December, members of the BNP Security Division, under instructions from leader Nick Griffin, entered the house of Sadie Graham in the East Midlands by deception. A second security team attempted to gain entry to the home of Kenny Smith in Scotland, but were unsuccessful. Thirdly, property belonging to Sadie Graham, including her personal computer, bought for her by her father, was removed without consent. And this is nothing short of burglary. Fourth, the BNP leadership has subsequently been trawling through Sadie Graham's computer. And on Tuesday, the 11th of December, Simon Darby, the deputy leader of the BNP posted an email found on her computer on his blog. Now, the content of this email was subsequently referred to in an article by Nick Griffin himself that was posted on the main BNP website. And this clearly implies that the BNP leader has been privy to a criminal act. Emails sent to Sadie Graham between Saturday the 8th of December and 10.15 on Monday the 10th of December have also been opened and read by the BNP leadership. And this, in turn, is a clear breach of the Data Protection Act. Point six is that Sadie Graham is a councillor on Broxtow Borough Council, and much of her council work, including correspondence from constituents, was on this computer. Not only is this again a breach of the Data Protection Act, it puts her constituents at risk, and it has prevented her from carrying out her duties as an elected councillor. Um, briefly, Madam Deputy Speaker, I now wish to turn to a few issues in terms of the financial irregularities in terms of the operation of the British National Party. And the feud between within the BNP is a clash of personalities and competence rather than politics, and much of it relates to allegations of financial mismanagement by the PNP's so-called Treasury team. As I have mentioned, I have here a copy of a report prepared by Searchlight Information Services today into the financial irregularities of the British National Party, and today I wish to put the contents of this report into the public domain. It is this unpublished dossier that I will send to both the Police and the Electoral Commission. Now, I'd like to take a few minutes to outline some of the serious issues this report raises. Time only permits a brief, a brief rehearsal of some of the many points included in this dossier. First, 
The British MPs' 2006 accounts have still not been submitted to the Electoral Commission, more than five months so far after the due date. The BNP's excuses for the delay do not stand up to the scrutiny, and the long delay suggests that irregularities have occurred. Second, the BNP has blamed one of the expelled individuals for up to £17,000 that has not been accounted for. Whether or not that individual carries any blame in this matter is not the point. It is clear that substantial party funds are unaccounted for. Third, another former national officer resigned recently, laying various serious charges of incompetence against the BNP's treasurer and especially against its deputy treasurer, who is responsible for the funds of local branches and groups. Fourthly, the BNP failed to report a specific donation of £5,315 in the period of 1st July 2007 to 30th September 2007 in contravention to the political party's elections and referendum act 2000. Fifth, BNP financial records were shredded at the home of the party's former national treasurer in 2004. Sixth, the BNP has solicited donations from overseas to an organisation by the name of Civil Liberty, which Searchlight considers is merely a front organisation set up to circumvent the prohibition on donations to political parties from individuals who are not registered to vote in the UK. Seven, before the prohibition of overseas donations introduced by the PPERA 2000, the BNP raised money in the USA by a method that contravened US law. Eight, there are allegations that Nick Griffin himself, the chairman of the BNP, has personally brought US donations into cash, in cash into the UK on his person. Nine, the BNP attempted to earn insurance commission by means of an insurance entity that was not authorised by the FSA, and there were serious doubts whether the activity was exempt from the requirement for authorisation. Ten, there is evidence that the BNP financed its insolvent position in 2006 by a failure to pay sums owed to HM Revenue and Customs in respect of PAYE and VAT. 11. There is evidence in this document that the BNP is not accounting for income tax and national insurance contributions under PAYE in respect of workers by incorrectly treating workers as self-employed, which also deprives those workers of employment rights. The failure appears to be long-standing. 12. There are allegations that the BNP has paid workers in cash to avoid tax and national insurance contributions and to enable them to claim state benefits. 13. The BNP reassured its auditors that it would continue in existence because of the availability of funds in its so-called regional accounting unit, but it is doubtful that the BNP had any legal recourse to these funds. 14. There is no evidence that the BNP has, account has, has accounted for corporation tax on profits on its own commercial activities. 15. The BNP omitted to prepare any accounts for the period 1st of October 2001 to 31st of December 2001. Finally, the BNP claims to have spent at least £70,000 on printing equipment in 2005 alone, but no such expenditure is shown in the accounts. In short, what is being uncovered in the internal workings of the British National Party appears to be systematic illegality in terms of data protection, bugging, money laundering, theft and the operation of the political party's elections and referendums act 2000. This demands a most thorough investigation. This is not the behaviour of a legitimate political party, and I very much hope to see the police and the Electoral Commission investigate these charges. That the fact that this is being orchestrated by the leader of a political party is the most shocking aspect. The BNP leadership, and Nif Griffin in particular, are showing us their true colours. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Mark Lancaster. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, it's um, a pleasure to have caught your eye to raise